If you're a Zcam owner and you're wanting to live stream using OBS, uh, this video will show you how to set up your camera and install all the necessary software and I will also show how to stream onto YouTube. So the first thing you're going to need to do is obviously have your Zcam product running. Uh, in my case I've got a Zcam E2C. I've got it switched on, it's set up on my desk now and I've got it plugged into my Ethernet cable uh, into a router and the E2C is in router mode so that it will have an IP address assigned to it by the router. So with that on and running in the background, the next thing you need to do is download Zcam Stream Converter from their website. Uh, which you can see the address for here and this is really a guide for Windows so download the Windows version and then run the installer for it and then what I also recommend uh, obviously if you're going to use OBS download OBS and I would recommend using the NDI plugin to get the stream converter working via NDI rather than the virtual camera option um, which I know does cause some people issues so both of them work for me but the uh, method I'm going to show you is using the NDI uh, output option so if you do a Google search for OBS NDI plugin it will take you here you can then click on this click on the release page and version 4.8.0 is the current release at the time of making this video. Scroll down, find the Windows installer, download the installer and run it to install the NDI plugin. And make sure that it installs into the same directory that you've installed OBS to so that it will find the plugin. So with that done, the next thing you want to do is to run the stream converter so I've got a shortcut here on my desktop to the stream converter I'm going to double click on it click yes uh, nothing will show up on the screen by default it appears in the system tray so if we look down the right hand corner near the time you can see there is a new uh, Zcam icon here if we double click on this the stream converter will load up so if you have your camera plugged in and it's connected correctly to your network or directly to your PC and it's in the direct mode you should see the device by its IP address here um, if you don't get this far then you need to go back to the camera and double check your network settings uh, as I say make sure if you've connected it to a router that it's in router mode or if you're connecting it straight to the PC make sure it's in direct mode uh, there is another mode as well which is static that I believe is if you want to set an IP address manually but it's still plugged into a router or a switch. So in my case I have it in router mode plugged into my router and the IP address is here on the screen. So before we start the stream converter streaming I'm just going to go through a few settings in here. Um, obviously some of these are depending on what you want to do but for me I have set the image to Rec 709 so that it has a color profile applied and in my case I'm going to be streaming 1080p uh, 60 frames per second so I have the shutter set to 1 120th aperture is as wide open as my lens uh, will allow ISO 2500 and then the next thing we need to do is go on to the record tab now although these settings mainly affect when we're recording on the camera and not streaming what you do want to do is check that the FPS is set correctly here and more importantly in the video menu I recommend setting the encoder to H.264 you can set it to H.265 and I've had this working but I don't believe that there's any benefit in trying to use the H.265 encoder when streaming um, the only real difference is you get 10 bit color through H.265 but as far as I'm aware that's not really a thing when you're streaming so set this to H.264 bitrate high then go into the system menu 
and here is where you have most of your streaming settings. So again I'm going to use 1080p, you can in theory stream in 4K if you want to, but I'm going to use 1080p, 60 frames per second, and as far as the bitrate is concerned you need to set this value appropriate to a what your internet bandwidth is because there's no no real point setting this higher than your bandwidth and also with respect to the resolution that you picked so if you are streaming 4k you will need a higher bit rate and you will therefore need an internet connection that is capable of that so in my case i've set it to 1080p 60 frames per second i'm going to leave the bit rate on 10 in this case the stream codec you can see here also is h264 and the decoding acceleration is H264 QVID. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the difference between these two options are, but from the research I've done, I believe QVID is the better option, especially if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. Um, I think this is the higher quality uh, decoder. So these are the settings I'm going to use, and I'm going to click Start to start the Stream Converter streaming the camera. And then we need to go into OBS and configure it for receiving this stream. Uh, one other thing to point out at this point is the if we go back to the system tray and we right click on the stream converter icon, there is a mode setting here. And if you're going to follow my example, it's important that this is set to NDI and not virtual camera. Uh, this should be the default if you've just downloaded the software, but you can change it to virtual camera. For now, leave it on NDI. I think this is the better option. And if you've downloaded and installed the NDI plugin, this is the one to use. So now that we've got the stream running, we go into OBS and we've got a default scene here, but we've got no input sources at the moment. So we click on plus and having installed the NDI plugin, we now have this new option that you won't see if the plugin is not installed, NDI source. So we click on this, we need to create a new source for our Zcam, in my case the E2C, click OK. Now we need to select the source, so as long as we have Stream Converter running, this should be the name of our PC, Zcam Stream Converter, bandwidth highest, sync network is the newest option for this plugin and I believe it's the best one to use. If you do have any issues uh, streaming over a long period with audio synchronization, you can try internal or source timing to see if that helps. But from uh, reading the documentation, I believe network is the optimal setting. Allow hardware acceleration. You usually want this checked if it's an option. YUV range, I'm gonna set this to full to match the settings I used in Stream Converter, 709. And I'm going to change the latency to low, even though it says experimental, it seems to work for me. Click OK. And we should see our camera. So now that we have our camera input displaying in OBS, we need to configure our stream settings. So go into settings and then go to stream. In this case, we're going to be streaming to YouTube, but the process is similar if you want to stream to Twitch or Facebook or somewhere else. So what you basically need to pick regardless of where you're streaming is set the server where you're going to send the stream to. In this case it pre-fills the YouTube stream servers for you so you don't have to type them in. And then you need a stream key. So obviously I'm not going to show you mine because you'd be able to stream to my channel. But in order to find this value if you go to your YouTube account go to the live dashboard we can see over here under the encoder setup you'll see there is a stream key so you need to reveal your key copy the value paste it into OBS in the stream key field click OK and that's how you set up the stream the other thing to do while we're in the settings is click on output and here we have the video bitrate. So again, this is dependent on what your internet bandwidth is capable of. In my case, I don't have that great upload. I'm going to set it to 10,000 to match the stream converter settings. 
um, but we'll see that this doesn't necessarily work all that well for me. Encoder, again, I have an NVIDIA graphics card, so if you have the option of using the NVENC encoder, I suggest you use it because it's much better performing than the software encoder. And in my case, I'm going to set encoder preset to low latency quality. Um, this tutorial isn't really about OBS, so there's lots of other settings you can change in here, but I'm not really going to go into them in detail. I'll just quickly dive into the video. So my monitor is actually a non-standard resolution. You'll see I have an ultra wide monitor, but this doesn't really fit with any of uh, YouTube's uh, video output options. So instead of streaming my desktop, I'm going to stream to uh, 1080p resolution and uh, 60 frames per second again to match the camera settings. So with those set up, we can click apply, click OK, and we're ready to stream. So basically all you need to do at this point is click start streaming and off you go. Now you can see down at the bottom the bit rate that you're sending data at. This icon shows you whether the stream is healthy or not. And if we go over to our YouTube channel here, we will now see that I'm live. The stream health is not great though. And we should be able to see the live stream appear. Uh, sometimes it doesn't automatically show up, so I'm just going to refresh this window. And now you can see the live stream is active and the latency is pretty good. As you can see, it's just a few seconds and it's not too bad. Uh, now if we look at this stream health, you can see, go back to OBS, that the stream is not healthy and we have some dropped frames here at the bottom. Uh, so this is going to impact the quality of the video. And the reason for that is that my upload speed isn't really capable of supporting the 10K bitrate that I've selected. So to fix this, I'm going to stop streaming. I'm going to go back into my stream settings, click on stream, uh, sorry, click on the output menu. I'm actually going to change this down to 5000 instead of 10. Click apply, click OK. And if we restart the stream now, we should see that it's much healthier because my internet can support this uh, bitrate. We now have no dropped frames. And if we look back over on the left, even though YouTube is still showing it as an amber stream, uh, in fact, this is perfectly healthy. And again, the latency is still pretty good and the quality is okay as well. So I hope this video has been helpful. Um, as I say, it's not really a deep dive into optimizing streaming uh, as a topic, but more how to get your Zcam working with OBS and basically use the NDI plugin, add the NDI input source. And if you follow the settings that I've used, it should work fine. Um, obviously play with the settings as you need to, to get the output that you want. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them in the comments section below and uh, I'll do what I can to help you out.